Before we discuss the weather, I want you to develop a habit of looking up at the sky to understand the weather. Learn as much as possible by writing down your observations to compile how the weather has varied over time. Go out every day for a few minutes, record your observations and note all the different parameters and their variations throughout the week. Why? Because this is how humans have always understood weather. To predict a future weather event, you need to know what factors will be common with a familiar past event. Parameters like temperature, air pressure, humidity, wind speed and wind direction. At what time of the day are you encountering these parameters? Where are you located? And other such details which will help you learn and analyze the weather. Weather is what's happening locally. In the atmosphere right now, there are six main components or parts of weather. They are temperature, atmospheric pressure, wind, humidity, precipitation and cloudiness. Together, these components describe the weather at any given time. These changing components along with the knowledge of atmospheric processes help meteorologists, scientists who study weather, forecast what weather will be in the future. Climate is the average or accumulated weather for a region over a period of time, including extreme conditions and their frequencies. It takes 30 plus years to develop a genuinely detailed climatological profile for a region. There are different types of climates based on how big the area is. A microclimate is a set of atmospheric conditions that change when you cross a few hundred square feet. The climate under a fig tree always differs from the climate around it. The area under a fig tree is a microclimate. Its temperature and humidity are stable because it's not directly exposed to the sun like the areas outside its canopy. A mesoclimate spans from a few acres to several square miles where certain atmospheric variables are consistent like the climate of a forest or a city. A macroclimate refers to the climate profile of a whole state or a country while global climate refers to the climate profile of the earth. While we're on the topic of climate, let's also discuss climate zones. Parts of our planet heat up differently from the sun because of the earth's tilt, making the equator hotter than the poles. This heat is redistributed by a process called global circulation. The speed of the earth's rotation, among other things, split the global circulation system from one big ball of wind going around the globe in a three cell pattern in both the northern and the southern hemisphere. So there's a three cell pattern in the northern hemisphere and a three cell pattern in the southern hemisphere. The largest cells are the Hadley cells at the equator. Hot air rises from the equator, moves towards the poles, gradually cooling and sinking as it moves below, descending and flowing back to the equator. The smallest cells are polar cells. Here, cold air descending in the polar region flows at lower levels till the air leaves the polar region where it starts to warm and rise. Returning to the poles, between the Hadley and the polar cells are the feral cells. Unlike the other two, the flow or air circulation direction is opposite to the other two systems, creating semi-permanent areas of high and low pressure giving us our climate zones. Let me show you. Where the air is rising, an area of low pressure is created. So these areas seem to have much more rainfall. This is why the largest areas of our rainforests are found near the equator and why the United Kingdom has a relatively wet climate. Where the air is descending, an area of high pressure forms, giving largely clear skies and little rainfall, which leads to desert regions. Can you find out what climate zone you're from? It will help you make informed decisions as the class progresses. Fun fact, with more rain falling in the Sahara Desert, Antarctica is the largest and driest desert overall. Until now, we've understood what the weather is and how it's different from the climate. And also, we've got a rough understanding of global circulation systems and the climate zones. Let's move on towards visualizing the atmosphere to really understand what we see when we look up at the sky.